Hey everybody, Space Cat here. I help uh, game dev noobs with Pico 8, and today we're doing a little different video. We're gonna go through and hunt down some problems with somebody's code. And I think we'll all learn quite a bit from this. I'm going into this completely blind. All I did was open up their Pico 8 cart. This is based on the platformer game that we work on in my Pico 8 course, Pico 8 Noob to Pro. And the person who's working on this posted the cart to our Discord and said, hey, I can't get these enemies moving. They're supposed to kind of be moving back and forth. And for whatever reason, that isn't happening. So we're going to dive in and try and figure out why that is. So starting out with, we have a map and a few places where they put the enemy tiles. And then those get switched out in the init with an actual sprite for the bad guys. But then these bad guys are supposed to kind of bounce back and forth in between these two white X's. So this is actually a little different than we did it in the course, but let's see what they got going on here. So we have init, we have I worm, U worm, and D worm. So these are just breaking out the functions into init, update, and draw. We have an animation timer that's 10, 10 frames, it looks like, clear screen, map. Okay, next tab is totally commented out because we're just focusing on getting these enemies working. So I worm, so worm, this is a collection of all of the enemies. Loop through tiles and find enemies. Okay, so for X zero to 69, do this. So we're getting X and Y coordinates and we're just kind of going through a loop and we're testing for MGET and looking for Sprite 25, which is gonna be this one right here. And if it's 25, we're gonna save its position in a table called putbacks. That's so that we can replace these tiles later if we have to reload the level. Then what we're going to do is set this to a blank tile, the tile nine, which is the sky tile. And then we're going to add an enemy right there. And this is just by adding a table to our table of enemies, which is called worm. We're going to give it an X and a Y position, a sprite, a flip, origin on X and a direction on X. So this is OX. This is where they're starting. Okay. And that's all we're doing to set this up. Ooh, this is, ooh, this is for the update. This should actually be in the init function. That's one thing because we're just setting this all up here and we're just re-adding it every frame. I wonder if that's maybe the entire problem. Let's just try that. So this doesn't need to be under update because update, remember, happens every frame. Move this code to the update function. Yeah, I don't think we should do this. Let's hit control X and let's put this back in the init. So this should work, save, run. And now we're looking for a function called wall collision, it looks like. If wall collision is false, then take away one from e.ex. And if wall collision equals true, then e.ex is plus. Yeah, this doesn't really make sense. This is going to be probably the entire problem right here. Okay. And then dworm is for all of everybody in worms. We just draw them. Now for the wall collision, let's see what we're doing there. And then the rest is hazards and stuff, which I don't think is going to be a problem. So I think our problem is going to be right here and right here. So first of all, let's just, this is going to be for, what's what's this end doing? This is dworm. Wow. This wall collision is in the draw function. Okay. So let's take this out of the draw function. Okay. One thing I like to do is just add a little comment after every end. This is end dworm. And this whole thing is going to be its own function. So that's one thing is that anytime that you define a function, you want to make sure that that is in its own it's its its own callback. It's not inside of another function. So that was that's one major problem that could really mess this up. So let's try this now. Save run. We got lots of things happening here. Okay. Wx is worm.ex. Yeah, because this needs to be inside of a loop. So what we're trying to do is break this all out into its own function. And what we're going to have to do is either not do this in its own function, or we're going to have to put this worm.ex into a argument that we actually send to wall collision. So one thing we could do is just put that right here. So we could take this right here, worm.ex plus four divided by eight. We could take this right here and just put this into our first argument for wall collision. And then this into our second argument for wall collision like that. Let's do the same thing here. That's going to save us a lot of trouble here. That should fix that. Save run. Oh, it's just so much worse now. Uh, okay. EX a nil value. Oh, that's because we can't do worm.ex. We have to do e.ex and e.ey. There we go. Look at that. They're moving. Okay. 
So that's sort of that's sort of happening. And now they're kind of dancing off of the side here. Okay, so what we really want to happen, we want these guys to start on this side, and then when they hit this X, I assume, we want it to flip a switch, basically, that makes it go the other way. And we can figure out why this isn't happening just by kind of reading this code and thinking about it um, in, in, like, in terms of what we're telling it to do, okay? So I think all of this setup stuff is just fine. For update, we're looping through all of the enemies, and we're testing if wall collision is true. If it's not colliding, then we're going to take one away every frame from e.ex. If it is, then we're going to push it to the right. The problem is that as soon as it pushes off of that left side, as soon as it pushes off this left side, it's not colliding anymore. And then it keeps just kind of running into it over and over and over and over. So it's going true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, like that. So what we really want is something that is not testing for this every single frame. It just kind of flips a switch. So instead of that, why don't we do something like this? Let's make a new, let's make a new variable. Actually, we already have it built in here because this was, this was sort of how we did it in the course. So this is direction X, so DX. So let's just take this and say E dot EX plus equals E dot DX. So we're adding direction each frame. Okay. Now here, what we'll do is we'll just say E dot DX equals negative one if it collides, and then we can get rid of this else. Now this should do just about the same thing. Save run, hmm, not quite. The reason for that is we want e dot dx to actually equal e dot dx times negative one. Now let's see. Now it's sort of doing the opposite. <laughs> it's sort of doing what it, it looks like it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every frame. So if it's not, oh, okay. So let's just do it if it's true. Save run. Oh, look at it go. Oh, baby. We just did it, kids. We just did it. Look at that. There we go. So now what we need to do is test this collision if it's 10. Let's actually do if it's 24. Let's just say if this is 24, then we bounce off of the X's. Okay. We could also do this instead of using this sprite number we could do a flag right so let's see what else has an, any flags here let's do just to be safe let's do flag seven okay flag seven on anything we're supposed to bounce off of okay flag seven let's do f get seven like this save run now he'll bounce off of the x's and they'll bounce off of the tiles anything that has that seventh flag they'll bounce off of very neat so then in the game we can just get rid of this X and just kind of make it a sky tile and you don't see the X's, but you can still kind of define when these guys bounce. Okay. So now we have everything working and there were a few little mistakes here that I think were probably just the result of kind of just getting confused and moving stuff around to try and fix it. Looking through the code a little bit. I think that the person who made this understands where the init and update and stuff is supposed to go. I think there's one major foundational thing here that was causing the problem. So anytime that you have something moving on the screen, you generally do that by giving it an X position and then adding a speed to the X position every frame. Okay. So a lot of the time that's one pixel. And so if we have this moving across the screen at one pixel per frame, we can use the code X equals X plus one, which just increases X by one every frame. Right. And what the dev who coded this was trying to do with the code was as soon as an enemy hit a wall, he wanted to switch this to x equals x minus one, which would make him go back this way. But the way that we were testing for that was we were asking every frame if he's touching a wall. And if we're not touching a wall, then we'll always go to the left. And as soon as we are touching a wall, boop, like this, that's going to switch that around to plus one which seems like it would work because if we're not touching a wall, we'll go this way. And then as soon as we touch a wall, we'll start going the other way, right? But the problem is that we're testing for this every frame. And so as soon as he leaves the wall, it goes back to this one and he runs into the wall again. Then we're touching the wall and it goes to this one and he goes off the wall. Then we go back to this one. And then that's why we get this, brrr, you know, back and forth. And so what we need to do instead is instead of switching this entire movement code, we need to make a little switch called direction or for short DX direction on X. So we can, that equals one, or, you know, in our case, maybe negative one to start out with. So DX equals negative one. And what we need to do is set this direction to actually be either one or negative one. And so what we can do is say DX times negative one, 
What this does is it sets itself to a negative version of itself when we are touching a wall. So let's say when, if touching a wall, if touching a wall, dx equals dx times negative one. So dx could start as one. And then once we touch a wall, it switches to negative one. And then once we touch a wall again, it switches to plus one. And so it only does it once. And then every frame we say x equals x plus dx which is the direction. So that's either gonna be one or negative one, right? And so as soon as we bounce off of that wall, we're not doing something different. We've just, as soon as we touch the wall, we've flipped this direction. And so it touches this other wall and it flips the direction back like that, flips the direction back. So we're not doing one thing if we're touching a wall and one thing if we're not, we're always doing the same thing. And the only thing that's switching is the direction once we hit the wall once. That's why this works and switching out this entire statement, whether we're touching the wall or not, doesn't work. So that leaves us with enemies that move back and forth. Isn't that cool? By the way, if you're just getting started with game development, or maybe just getting started with Pico 8, I have a course called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. We go over my step-by-step -step process to go from game dev noob to being able to create any kind of game in Pico 8. This thing is just packed full of aha moments, and I know it'll help you make your game ideas a reality. It's called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. There's a link in the description or go to spacecatdev.com. Hey, if you have any questions or if this didn't make sense or you want me to go slower or faster or whatever, let me know in the comments. Now we got bouncy enemies, baby. Yeah.